Come on, you piece of... Let's play That and Visitor. Hello and welcome to Hulu. Play short in your games today. I'm going to play a game by Rastan Parda. This is a visual novel as part of the Spooktober 5th annual visual, no visual novel jam. Um, something that I think every single year I play at least one or two games of this um, game jam and I usually really enjoy them. So, uh, this is a thrilling tale that weaves elements of science fiction and cosmic horror into a thought-provoking narrative. I do love cosmic horror. I recently started going to a science fiction book club in Berlin, so I think I'm like so prepared for this. <laughs> so, let's, let's go. Old? Oh, I hope it's not too long. But Spooktober Jam usually is... Okay, hi little fella. Hello? No, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. You've got to be kidding me. What do you mean they won't pay? Uh, your insurance company is disputing the claim because of Mrs. Berger's statement. They're arguing that the damages couldn't have done by any known animal, which puts you in a very difficult position. God damn it. And it probably didn't help that I went her to her clinic to rave like a madman. I understand that emotions were running high, but that sure wasn't the best course of action. I just couldn't believe that she wouldn't help me. No! Leave the frog alone! It's a toad, I guess. I promise you, Johan, we'll explore every avenue to make this right. You better, because I won't give up without a fight. You have my word. Have a good night. As if it could get any worse. Well, if you hit that... I'm sorry, what, what were you saying? Hello, are you still there? What the hell? You're stopping? That's good. Come on, you piece of... Is that the toad that transformed or was there something else? Oh, there was something else. Look, little toad. It's fine. He crashed into the cosmic horror monster. Vet and the visitor. So the visitor is probably the monster. But the vet, is that a veteran or a veterinarian? Because that's very confusing. American people. Why did you do that? <laughs> I enjoy this. This is a lot. This, honestly, this is too much. Like, this menu, no. No, it's a visual novel. No, don't do it. <laughs> but maybe if you're more into visual novels, that's normal. I don't know. It's Johan. Why, oh, why would he be calling this late? I thought it was Johan saying. Um, let's be worried. Or something happened to him. I grabbed the phone and answered his call. Johan? I'm sorry to by KX. The call was plagued by a huge amount of interference, and Johan's voice was barely recognizable amidst the distortion. I would be worried. Why would I be annoyed? I mean, I don't know the history if he pulled the shit before, but as of now, I would say I'm worried. I can hear something's wrong, but the call is breaking up. Are you okay? Can you hear me? I hit well, hit big enema. Okay. <laughs> from the parts I could hear, his voice seemed fine, but the call was suffering from frequent interruptions. Try to stay calm, so he says calm. You've had a car accident involving a large animal, but you're okay, right? Yeah, I'm right. But any you to come see this, I'm heading back to the farm. Let's just read it like it is, because it's very easy to... Okay, still, why would I be annoyed? I mean, I guess I would be annoyed that I have to get up in the middle of the night. But if my husband called me and it wasn't an accident and called me, you have to get me, I would be worried. I come over right away. Just stay safe until I get there. Okay. Drive safe. Uh, wait. Mary, I'm ready. Sorry. Sympathetic. Johan, it's fine. I know you're sorry and I appreciate that. We'll discuss it properly when I get there, okay? I know you're sorry and I appreciate that. That's a weird thing to say because we don't yet know... I mean... 
If an animal runs on the road and you crash into it, it's not necessarily your fault. So I don't know why he should apologize in the first place. And just for her to say, yeah, I appreciate that is weird because it's like, would you, why would you assume that it's his fault in the first place? Hmm. But that's just me. That's just me. Okay, see you soon. Yon hung up the call. So then it's me. Better get myself ready. Yeah, let's pick some, some cute outfit. Can I get... No. <laughs> I took my keys and was about to head out the door when I noticed a small leaflet on the floor. Pick it! Curiosity got the better of me and I bent down to pick it up. What is it? End is near. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, read it. As you hold this leaflet, understand that we stand at the precipice of cosmic reckoning. I mean, we're in a cosmic horror game, so this leaflet is probably closer to the truth. In real life, it'd be like, yeah, sure. The unrelenting pursuit of knowledge has breached the boundaries set by the ancients, and the gods' anger festers. This looks like it's from one of those doomsday calls. Do they still exist? I wonder. I mean, from what I read, a lot of the calls are more like into money making and just religious power manipulation stuff. But are, are doomsday calls still a thing? I wonder. I have to look that up. Ever since that black hole discovery, these groups seem to have multiplied like wildfire. I mean, they, they don't they discover black holes all the time? But they really cannot... It's impossible for something to come out of it or, you know, it's like we're fine with the black holes for now. Uh, rational. Scientists have been monitoring the black hole closely. While it's an intriguing discovery, there's no concrete evidence to suggest an imminent threat. I won't let this disturb my sleep. As long as they continue to affirm, there's nothing to worry about. I have to go. Yon is waiting. Yeah. I hope that's not like the bad ending now because I read that leaflet. The tire screeches I drove from the smooth concrete road to the rugged gravel path that led to Johan's farm. Wait, he has a farm? Holy shit, I had grown accustomed to late night visits, particularly when animals were in distress during labor. So are we friends? Are we lovers? Are we friends with benefits? Are we enemies? Are we family? Yet yeah, tonight it felt different. Johan's livestock had met a tragic fate and I found myself questioning whether I had acted too quickly in the matter. What did you do? Repentant. I had been truthful in my statement regarding to the case, but I couldn't help but feel a pang of regret. So maybe they got ill and she was like, sh sh so she's the vet. She's the vet. The other one is the, the monster's the visitor. She's the, so it's the veterinarian. It's not the veteran. And, um... Yeah, that's the shitty thing, you know, if animals, if, if livestock gets like a virus or anything, usually they kill off the whole livestock so it doesn't spread. It was a difficult position to be in, caught between my commitment to honesty and my desire to help a friend in need. As I drove past the fields, my gaze inevitably shifted towards the open expanse where the cattle had once grazed. I've seen a lot in my profession, but this was something else, something I hadn't witnessed before. What remained of the cows appeared as though they had been run over by a combined harvester! Ew! The truth of John's desperate financial situation was no secret. Everyone knew he had been grappling with hard times. A cruel combination of poor harvests over the past few years and the relentless rise in tax rates. The weight of these struggles had cast a heavy shadow over his life, leaving him on the brink of ruin. The community suspicion had cast a long dark cloud of doubt out of him, it feels like the whole town is watching, waiting for the truth to emerge. W what doubt? No, I will trust... Yeah, I indubio polio. I will not play this like he's a bad person. Although the game is like... Something's off with him. He has to apologize. He's the bad guy. He's the problem. But I want... I don't want that. No. Trust him. Yet, despite the prevailing skepticism, I wanted to believe that there was more to the story than met the eye. I don't know the story. What is going on? If the animals catch a virus, that's not something where you have to, like, you cannot, I mean, that's not your fault, right? Eventually, my headlights revealed Johan's damaged car parked alongside an old weathered shed. The sight of the crumpled hood, fresh blood splatters, and the damaged bumper that barely hung on its plate place was undeniable evidence of a recent accident. Yeah, that, that looks bad. I like it. 
I stepped out into the cool night air. I like that it's... It looks... It looks like it's really... The art is made, you know, from scratch. It's not uh, bought, store bought. The farm was enveloped by an almost otherworldly silence, with no sounds but the distant hum of crickets in the fields. There was no sight of Johan. Do you want to shout? I call him on the phone. Inspect the car. Head to the shed. I thought I had to sneeze, but not now. Okay. Mmm. Inspect the car. The hood was crumpled and dented while the bumper had taken a significant blow, leaving it distorted and misshapen. The animal involved must have been flung onto the hood, crashing headlong onto the windshield. In the process had it twisted off Johan's beloved mosquito-shaped hood ornament. Suddenly I could hear Johan's voice, muffled yet audible, emanating from the shed. Maurice, is that you? Yeah, my voice echoed in the stillness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come inside, quick! Uh, he urged. I hesitated for a moment, but Yuan's urgency left me with little choice. Without further delay, I hurried through the yard to the shed and pulled the door open. Wow! Uh, it looks gorgeous. I'm so, I feel sad for it. As I entered the shed, my steps faltered and the breath caught me in my throat. The air escaped my lungs and for a moment I stood frozen in disbelief. I would... My first instinct would always be like, either, oh, this is great special effects, man, someone did an amazing job. And then the second would be, maybe it's a mutation. I would never immediately jump to, it's an alien, it's a, it's a, it's an eldritch creature or whatever. I would always be very steeped in science. I mean, because when it comes to creatures, creature features, etc., monsters, you know, it's so likely that it's just an aberration in a normal animal like werewolves or whatever you know that not i'm not, i don't mean that werewolves exist as an aberration but more that it could be that there's a very big wolf you know that's more likely than werewolves existing okay oh gorgeous i like it Nothing in my life could have prepared me for the surreal sight. And then I would be sad, because then I would be like, well, if it exists, then, and we haven't seen it before, that means that it's very rare. Maybe one of the last of its kind, and now it's dead, because Johan drove into it. That's so sad. Although he didn't really drive into it, did he? Hmm. It was only then that I noticed Johan standing next to me, having closed the door behind me as I entered the shed. Uh, I guess I would ask, if he's my friend, I would probably ask if Yuan is okay, right? Are you alright? Yeah, I'm okay. I managed to pull the brakes just in time to lower the impact. The car and whatever the thing is took most of it. Since it doesn't have a tail nor scales, we can rule out any known reptile. Even dinosaurs. Oh. I can't entirely dismiss the notion of a mutation or the possibility that it might have lost its tail at some point. Man, she's right on it. Like, no time to waste. Although I can't seem to find any signs that the tail was merely lost or shed. It appears to be part of its inherent anatomy, or lack thereof. My fingers traced lightly along the creature's surprisingly sturdy and nearly unscathed skin, which resembled that of a frog, albeit with subtle differences. Uh, continue to inspect the creature. I want to know more. I proceeded with my examination to the creature's hands. Each finger... That's not a finger. Each finger adorned with razor-sharp claws that glistened in the dim light. If you hear something in the background, my cat is going wild right now. It was evident that its arms were too short for a four-legged gait, though the webbing between the fingers hinted at an adaption for swift swimming. So it's on two legs. Bipedal, I think that's called. Point out the claws. Continue to expect the... Now it's two... It's both of my cats now. Hey! Do I want to point out the claws? No, I want to continue to... I want to find out more about it. The robust muscular legs appeared well-suited for powerful and agile movement, reminiscent of a frog's limb structure. 
Combined with the webbed feet equipped with sharp short claws hinted at a unique adaption for both terrestrial and aquatic locomotion. Mm, continue to inspect? I don't know if, if it skips then the continual Asian, you know, that if I focus too much on one, then I don't know how the game is designed. It's unusual how unharmed it appears, considering there was quite a lot of blood on your car. Now that you mention it, I lifted the body onto my car and fastened it with straps without it bleeding a single drop on me. I rushed to collect the body after I had recovered from the crash, but I don't remember seeing much, if any blood on the road either. Hmm. Take a closer look. Could you lift its torso for a bit? Yeah, sure. With apparent ease, John lifted the creature's head and torso, giving me better access as I examined the underside more closely. And there, hidden from plain sight, was a punctured hole in the creature's flesh. Oh. There were some traces of blood around the wound, yet to my astonishment it didn't seem to be actively bleeding. Maybe that's from the mosquito thingy on the car. I can't help but chuckle to myself, for in the movies they always make scientists examine alien life forms with their bare hands. And here I am, repeating the same mistake. I mean, you didn't. Would you assume that it's an alien life form? You cannot make that assumption. Absolutely, 100%, you cannot make it. Even if you say, we haven't seen this so far. Occam's razor, honestly. I mean, just even as a scientist, I think if you see a creature on Earth, you're not immediately jumping, it's alien. It's more like we don't know yet what it, where it comes from. And to know if it's an alien creature, you have to actually go through the blood work and DNA just to see if it resembles any DNA that's terrestrial. Just saying, you know. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you're looking for? I think I'm onto something. Hold on a moment. I extend my both ha both my hands, cautiously probing the wound. Eh. It didn't take long until I could feel something solid beneath the surface. With a careful, precise motion, I gently grasped it, and my fingers pulled out the mosquito-shaped ornament covered in mucus-like substance. And I told you, got it. The Mitch. Our celebration was short-lived, as a sudden, unexpected sound pierced through the air. Oh no! Its family is like looking for it. It had been hidden beneath our excitement, an eerie rhythm pulsating from the creature on the table. Oh, it's the creature itself? No. <laughs> the creature launched up from the table with lightning speed, its massive weight knocking Johan off his feet and onto the cold, dusty floor, losing consciousness immediately. No, he's done. Run to the car. <laughs> Sorry, Johan. In the chaos that unfolded within the shed, my survival instincts kicked in. Panic overwhelmed me, and without a moment's hesitation, I sprinted outside and all the way back to my car. I know it's shitty. I'm sorry. Emergency services. What's your location and the nature of your emergency? I need help. There's a dangerous creature here, and it's after me. I'm near Johan Gunnarsson's farm. Please send someone quickly. I'm dispatching help to your location. Stay on the line. Keep your dark car doors clocked and remain as safe as possible. Sorry for my reading. It's a bit... We're sending as 10 row away. Wow! So it didn't help at all. Bad ending. Get away that. Oop! Okay, let's go for another ending. I wish I could skip some more, but that's fine. I will not go for I don't I think it has four endings or so. I will not go. I will go for a second ending and then we're done so. And then you can actually uh try for the others. Okay. Ba 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 beep ba. So happy that the little toad survived. So it's implied because it says cosmic horror, it is implied that it's alien. But I'm not quite sure if every alien creature is cosmic horror. I guess it, it's supposed to be because it has the webbed feet, which is very eldritch. But we don't really know. It's more the mention that this visual novel is cosmic horror is the only info that we have that it is. If you know what I mean. Because such a creature, like, I, I'm not quite sure if alien, for example, is cosmic horror. It's is space horror, you know. And a lot of body horror. 
All right, so what should we do for the second one? So we help him? Hmm. Should we make an asshole run that we would be annoyed? Hopeful. Wait. Maybe he's calling to apologize? What did he do? Maybe because he was angry at her? I don't know. Hello? Uh, yeah. Let's be annoyed. This car is a mess. What's going on? <laughs> that is hilarious. I love it. From the parts I could hear his voice seemed fine, but the car was suffering from frequent... Uh, let's be nervous. I'm getting bits and pieces here, but it sounds serious. Are you hurt? Have you called the ambulance? Okay, the rest is... I, I only read the new stuff, you know. No, no old hits. Sorry. No oldies. Uh, let's be annoyed. Fine. I'll be there in a bit. Ugh. And he's so nice. I feel super bad. You know, let's just hang up. Be an ass about it. But maybe if we're faster... No. If we're faster, will there be a different ending? Leave the apartment. Ignore it. I have to go. Johanna's waiting. Annoyed. The entire situation was riddled with drama. From the conflict with the insurance company to Johan's visit. Uh... While I understood his frustration over my statement, it was infuriating to think he expected me to compromise my integrity for his benefits. So he, she's, it's her fault that he doesn't get any insurance money. Damn. Or did he kill the animals? Doubt him. I couldn't help but share the doubts, wondering whether I could trust Yuan in the midst of this whole mess. Do they think he killed the animals to get the insurance money? <gasps> Then he got what he deserved, and now in the second ending I want to help him. Oh shit. Well, shout out his name. Johan? My words echoed in the stillness. Then I heard Johan's response, muffled yet audible, emanating from the shed. Okay. I hesitated for a moment, but Johan's urgency left me with little choice. Okay. I'm not quite sure if anything changes, because those four ch choices seem like they all lead to the same. There we go. I'd be so... I, I'm not gonna lie. I think I would be excited. I would be very scared, but I would be so excited to be able to see a creature like this. I mean, that's that's a one in a lifetime. Not even that. Once in a thousand gazillion lifetimes moment, you know. And yes, it's dangerous and we're getting killed, but still, I mean, what a way to go. <laughs> And I'm not saying this because I want to get killed by an Eldritch creature, you know, it's just, I mean, if I had the choice between like a car accident and getting mauled by a literally fantastical creature, I mean, you know, I don't want to, like, I don't want to suffer, like, I don't want to get dragged into its nest and then suffer for three or five days, you know, like a quick thingy. But then it would still be so cool. And then at the pearly gates, I'd be like, man, you will not believe how I got here. <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, because you belong down there. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, let's be excited about it. Yeah, and this is incredible. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I know, right? The longer I stare at it, the more I question my own eyes. Since it doesn't have blah, 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 any known reptile, even dinosaurs, she's very fast to rule everything out. Like, what kind of... She's a veterinarian. It's not like she's the leading biology professor in the entire world, you know? She's... I mean... She's very... Like, even if you were, I think you wouldn't rule everything out so fast. You know? I don't... I'm not sure I like her, to be quite honest. Okay. Um, point out the lack of damages yeah yeah there's remarkably little damage to its body especially when we compare it to the state of your car oh shit I um but it's dead right no I, I don't see any signs of movement or vital activity well shit 
Yeah, that's another sh an another sign that Marie does not really know what she's talking about. So it's dead. No, Marie, you're you. No. <laughs> Point out the claws. Look, these claws. They're like scythes. Only these are capable of cutting down trees. Ooh. <laughs> I like how the legs are described nearly sexy, like Tina Belshaw would describe them, you know, like uh, the muscly throbbing legs. <laughs> Point out the legs. He has really strong legs. I suspect it could not only run, but also jump impressive distances. Oh, that's why it jumped right into our car. I think it tried to leap over my car, but it stumbled on the hood and got hit on the windshield. Oh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I wanted to do like a whole cool move and then it just stumbled. Oh man. I hope no one of its friends saw that. When it comes back, it will tell a different story to its friends. It's like, well, I got into this altercation. Oh, how did you do that? Well, I, um, <clears throat> I, I, I did this on purpose. I, tr I pretended I was dead and then I surprised them and they were like, wow, that's really cool. What's that hole in your chest? Oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm having so much fun with this because I honestly, I really like this. I think it's it's really well done. You're obviously going to have to change your statement now, right? Oh, so yeah, they thought the animals were killed by Johan, but it was actually this eldritch creature. Oh, now I get it. Okay, okay, okay. Stay focused on the wound. Let's stay focused on the wound. Johan, really, not now. Without looking up, I decided to focus on examining the wound, leaving Johan's words hanging in the air. Uh, I continue to push forward, searching for any foreign objects that might have caused the injury. Johan's voice persisted. His words mix of frustration and underlying plea for understanding. You probably don't blame yourself, and I can't blame you for what you said, but do you really understand what it's been like for me? I have to... I want to... Okay, let's answer them. Exactly, I snapped. You can't possibly blame me for the insurance situation you're on. I was just doing my job. You really think I kill my own cattle just for the insurance money? The circumstances were suspicious and I have a duty to consider all possibilities, even the difficult ones. Good question for you. Would you lie for a friend for, the, uh, for this kind of stuff? I mean, given... Here's the thing. Given that they looked so mauled, I would probably... I mean, she wasn't sure. And she could have given a statement where she said, this looks more like an animal. Because, I, I mean, she's she seems to be really shit at her job. Because if it had claws and ripped through the animals, that was probably very visible. And, you know, how could he have done this? So I think she just is a very shitty vet. Um, you should not go to her. Your animals will die. She will make all the wrong decisions. So I actually am on Yuan's side because if she had looked a little bit closer, she would have realized there was a wild ad. Because I honestly, I'm not even a biology expert, but from what I've seen in movies, <laughs> I know that it's very easy to differentiate between animals getting killed by a human being and by like claws, you know, like a mo monster with claws. People have been gossiping in town and it's hard to ignore the way they've been pointing fingers at you. And that's why she's shitty at her job because that should not have any impact on her observations. Things weren't exactly looking good for you. I have to admit that I had my doubts. Ugh. Oh, Marie. The silence that followed my confession was almost suffocating and Yuan's face seemed like it wanted to speak a thousand words. But before he could utter a single one, a sudden unexpected sound pierced through the tension. The monster's like, hi! Forgot about me? <laughs> it had been hidden beneath our argument and eerie rhythm, blah blah blah. Okay, and now we'll have... <laughs> I love this, it looks so funny, I'm sorry. Okay, help Johan. It looks so funny. Summoning all the courage within me, I shouted at the creature, hoping to divert its attention away from Johan. Leave him alone, you meanie! And with a sudden powerful lunge, the creature made its decision. It is the me. In that fleeting moment, our gaze is locked, and I could see an intelligence in the creature's large and yellow eyes. It's like, oh, you're beautiful. As the creature drew close, it emitted a deep guttural croak. Aww. 
The sound was a strange and eerie combination of a low rumble and a croak, like the call of some ancient monstrous amphibian. I covered my mouth with my trembling hand, desperate not to scream. Pull out the ukulele and sing It's Not Easy Being Green. And then the monster would be like, oh my god, you love the Muppets? And she's like, everyone loves the Muppets. And the monster's like, yeah, they're amazing. Okay, the creature's massive jaws began to open, revealing row upon row of sharp teeth. I could smell its boggy breath as it inched closer. The moment seemed to stretch on forever as I was paralyzed by fear and unable to look away from these terrible jaws. So I have to close my eyes? Yeah. Womp womp. Bad ending. Supper. There's good endings? I don't want them. I think that's an amazing ending. So I saved Johan from the monster. I really enjoy this. I think this is, is well done. I, I think... It's fun to, I think, hunt for the different endings because you have a lot of different dialogue choices. I really like that we basically uncovered the core mystery between those two um, in the second playthrough. So it's 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 well structured, this visual novel. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. I like creature features, so I really enjoy this. But yeah, also, I'm always on the side of the monster. That's just me. I'm sorry. I think, you know... I don't know why, but I, I don't know. I'm always on the side of them because I'm always like, well, it's such a it's such a wonder that it even exists, you know, and we shouldn't just hunt it down just because it attacks some of us, you know, we should just leave it in peace. That's always my opinion, even when it's like aliens. <laughs> I was like, oh man, poor, poor thing. Except an alien because the cat was in danger, but only the first one, you know. And also, I love Ripley. That's that's the main thing. That with with Alien, it's different because I love Ripley. I want her to survive. Okay, but anyways, <clears throat> how did you like it? Uh, would you have driven away, or would you have tried to help Johan? So here's my point. She saw this creature, this gigantic, muscular, you know, throbbing, muscular legs. I, I added the throbbing. I'm sorry about this. Um, and and would helping him do any any good? would it i mean she could have maybe um you know grabbed a tool or whatever but as it is i feel like there was no way to help him you know and i'm not even quite sure in this in such a situation if you can make an, an, an informed decision or if just your instincts take over and for some people instincts are really just running away and for others it's just, just staying and helping i'm not quite sure i w i don't know what i would have done um I'm uh, I think I would probably drive away because if it lunges at him I would immediately think well usually animals when they lunge at someone they also always go for the for the neck you know for the jugular and so he would probably be mauled and then if I went after him he would still die in my arms so that's you know no use but I can't say but I want to know your opinion <laughs> Uh, yeah. Also, if you're new to this channel, I play a lot of video horror games. I do like my short visual novels occasionally. And if you enjoyed all of this, all, all the throbbing muscular eldritch legs, uh, then feel free to subscribe. And I promise you, if I'm a vet, you're my friend, and your animals all get mauled, you know, and the townsfolk are like, well, he did it himself. I will, so I will, first of all, I wouldn't even listen to the gossip because you're my friend. So I would rather, and yes, it's subjective, but I would rather believe you if you look me in the eyes and tell me it wasn't me. I would believe you because you're my friend. I mean, unless I know you for doing skeezy shit, you know, I have no reason to believe that you did this horrible thing. And then also I would do my job and I would not be so lackadaisical with my investigation. Because honest, I mean, come on, you can you can differentiate between someone killing their animals and a monster slashing through livestock. I mean, that's so subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you had a good time. I hope you have a wonderful day and maybe see you next time. Bye. This is my self-recorded outro song so I don't get hit with copyright claims. If you subscribe, you subscribe to a lot of fun tutorials, reviews and let's plays.